Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be ranking the best healers, ranged, and melee. Predominantly, this will be focused around rated battlegrounds, but a lot of what makes these specs both good and bad will still apply to normal non-rated battlegrounds. So even if you're a casual player looking to decide on a strong spec to help you break into the RBG scene, or a seasoned veteran wanting to build the best composition available, then this is the video for you. This video has been put together with the help of the expert opinions of the highest rated battleground team in Europe to make sure we give you the best possible information available. Before we get started, you're obviously here because you're a fan of rated battlegrounds, right? Well, Skillcapped is the only place on the planet where you can watch and learn how the best rated battleground players in the world play their craft. Alongside our world class arena commentaries, we've also got a section dedicated entirely to RBGs, including an in depth look at the best strategy for every single map. On top of that, for prices as low as $4.99 a month, you also gain access to hundreds of WoW arena guides designed to improve your skill and rating in PvP as a whole. And with a money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So if you're looking to push rating this season and stay ahead of the competition regardless of bracket, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. All right, so let's get started by going over our ranged specs. Now, as we're covering so many specs in one video, we're going to keep it super brief and to the point. Starting off in our lowest tier, we've surprisingly got Beast Mastery Hunter. Despite their obvious strength inside of Arena, pet classes just tend to not do too well inside of Battlegrounds, as your pet can too easily be focused and cleaved down. Suffering the same problem and joining Beast Mastery, we've got Demonology Warlocks. Demo, in fact, can be even more of a hindrance, as the constant stream of imps from Hand of Golden can go on to buff enemy damage. Joining our two pet specs in our lowest tier, we got Arcane Mage. Arcane is just severely lacking. You have less slows than Frost, and far less bursts than Fire Mage would otherwise bring. The last spec joining our lowest tier is Marksmanship Hunter. Marksman, in theory, is the perfect battleground spec, but currently the damage just isn't there. You've got decent bursts but lack any crowd control or even utility, not to mention even when left free, the sustained damage is still lacking. Jumping up one tier into our B tier, our first edition is going to be Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest, much like Beast Mastery, is very strong in Arena, but this just doesn't translate well into Battlegrounds. If this was purely for random Battlegrounds, Shadow Priest would be higher, but in coordinated games, they're just way too easy to shut down, especially against Paladins playing with Cleanse the Weak. Being shut down is a problem our next spec knows oh too well, Destruction Warlock. Destro, when left to free cast, can have a very big impact on Battlegrounds, but it's very rare you'll ever be left free. But the added utility from Gateway and Health Stones are always a welcomed addition and earn Destruction a spot in our B tier. Mage as a whole just doesn't really perform inside of Rated Battlegrounds, and we're going to be placing both Fire and Frost inside of our B tier. We're grouping these up as ideally if you're looking to play mage, you'll be capable of playing both specs. Frost is good for defending and also slowing enemies on maps like Silver Shard Mines. Fire, on the other hand, is decent for teamfight maps, but being so reliant on combustion leaves them lackluster when compared to the consistent damage or even burst other specs are capable of providing. Moving up one tier to our A tier now, we're getting into the specs considered a little bit more meta, first of which being Affliction. Affliction does some of the highest sustained damage and can even burst quite hard with Dark Soul, but what gets them their A tier position is for the most part their utility. The combination of Health Stones, Gateways, and Shadow Rift combined with the consistent slows coming from Curse of Exhaustion makes them almost a must have. Most importantly though, they bring Dispel Protection coming from Unstable Affliction. Also finding themselves inside of our A tier, we've got Elemental Shamans. While not seen that often, Elementals are capable of doing some ridiculously high damage, especially now in 9.1 thanks to the addition of the pseudo dispel protection from Control of Lava. Much like Affliction, Elemental also brings some great utility, just this time coming from Sky Fury and Grounding Totem. Then, last but not least, the sole spec being placed in our S tier is going to, of course, be Balanced Druids. Balance just has it all. You've got the insane, undispellable crowd control from Cyclone, high consistent dot damage, huge burst with Convoke the Spirits. You can ink bases with stealth, you can defend with treants, you can float and traverse the map with ease. Honestly, there isn't anything a Balanced Druid cannot do, and it's why you see them so often inside of RBG. Okay then, on screen now you'll see a recap of our ranged specs. Up next, we've got Melee. Same as before, we'll start in our lowest tier, this time it's D. 
in which our first edition is Outlaw Rogue. Outlaw has lost a lot of its main niches. The ranged stun combined with grapple could be used to cheese bases, but now as this is no longer there, there just isn't anything that Outlaw does better than the other two rogue specs. Weak burst, minimal cleave when compared to assassination, less lockdown than subtlety, there just isn't any reason to bring Outlaw. Much like Outlaw, our next spec just doesn't really bring anything that other specs can't do better, and that's Survival Hunter. Most strong melee have either insane single target or really good cleave. Survival has neither. Its only real niche is its ability to defend, and even then, Beast Mastery does that, but better. Okay, so that's going to round out our lowest melee tier. Up next, we've got C, in which our first edition is Fury Warrior. Fury Warrior in Raided Battlegrounds isn't actually as bad as you would first think. The main reason for this is that you can, unlike in Arena, get away with playing the Talent Death Wish. This allows you to deal some ridiculous damage in the right circumstances, but alas, even then, its damage and utility isn't close to that of Arms Warrior. Also finding a place inside of our C tier, we've got Enhancement Shaman. Enhancement just lacks the integral tools that make a good melee, including a lack of damage, mobility, or moral strike effect, not to mention their survivability is undeniably weak. Although the one thing Enhance has going for them is that you can buff up stronger melees such as Warriors, meaning they can still have a place in a melee dominant composition, but it's rare we see them. And the last spec joining our C tier is Unholy Death Knight. Suffering the same fate as both Fury and Outlaw, Unholy is just greatly outshined at the moment by its Frost counterpart. You lack any real substantial burst damage, and while you bring high AoE pressure, it's easily countered by the extremely meta Disciplined Priest. Once again, we're going to be moving up one tier to our B tier inside of which we're going to be placing Assassination Rogue. Assassin Rogue can do some ridiculously high spread damage on certain maps, namely Silver Shard Mines and Temple of Katmogu. This combined with its AoE healing reduction makes it a decent option when you want to focus purely on team fighting. Also slotted into our B tier, we've got another spec which is good in niche situations, and that's Feral Druid. Feral has seen a resurgence in play, specifically on flag maps and small skirmish maps, where the power of one minute convoke inside of a stun can quickly take out enemies. Outside of that, in most cases, you're still going to be better off playing balance. Moving up a tier, we're getting into the specs now, which are seen a lot more often. First being Havoc Demon Hunter. Havoc is incredibly useful in RBGs, having an AoE mortal strike effect, great mobility, and very strong 1v1 capabilities, especially with the hunt. But in pure team fights, it hasn't really got the sustained pressure that you need from your melee, not to mention it's very easy to kill. Next, we've got a spec which has dropped down a tier from our S tier in patch 9.0, Rhett Paladin. Rhett is extremely hit or miss. It's a great team fight melee, but if teams play well, it can be shut down very easily. This is because if enemy teams shut down your Avenging Wrath with crowd control or defensive cooldowns, you're a lot less useful than most melee. And much like Demon Hunter, Retribution Paladins are a great target for teams to focus and easily kill. There is a common theme inside of our A tier, and that's specs which deal high damage but are just easy to focus down. One spec which you don't see too often for this reason is Windwalker Monk, but even despite their lack of popularity inside of RBGs, they're still a very strong melee. Unless you've been living under a rock, you would have seen the damage a Windwalker is capable of doing, and this done in an RBG game on a stacked up team can be devastating. Tools like Ride the Wind and Ring of Peace are also incredibly useful on certain maps. Alright then, so that leaves us at our strongest tier of S. These specs all define the melee meta inside of RBGs. First being Subtlety Rogue. Every single team needs one of these. You're the best defender, the best at attacking bases, and can single-handedly win your team games if you play well. Abilities like Shadowy Duel, Smoke Bomb, and the consistent crowd control from Shadow Dances are all incredibly strong tools on almost every map. A new addition with 9.1 climbing up the ranks into our S tier is Arms Warrior. Arms Warrior is now a staple melee team fighter in pretty much every composition. The high sustained damage coupled with the finishing power of Sharpened Blade. Then on top of that, you've got all of the high cleave pressure and AoE mortal strike effect from Storm of Destruction. Overall, just a super hard to kill high pressure team fight class. The other new addition climbing the ranks into our S tier is a warrior's partner in crime, Frost Death Knight. Frost Death Knights are good for a multitude of reasons. Powerful slows, high damage, great cleave pressure, but most importantly is their ability to group up enemies with Abomination Limb and Death Grip. This done on a huge group of enemies with a Solar Beam on top and a Spear of Bastion to keep them inside is just a death sentence. Okay, so that's our melee and range tier list wrapped up. On screen now, you'll see a quick recap. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It costs you nothing and it helps us out a ton. 
Healers are up next, and we'll be splitting them up into three tiers, with our lowest tier being B. And inside of it, our first spec is going to be Mistweaver Monks. Much like their performance in Arena, currently Mistweavers are just heavily lacking. Both their personal survivability and sustained healing output is just way too weak, not to mention they're way too reliant on casting. One very overpowered new addition they received is Peace Weaver, which is essentially a full reset inside of a team fight, but in the meta, currently they're still way behind other healers. Also going into our lowest tier, we've got Holy Priest. Holy Priest is another spec which falls short when it comes to RBG. They just lack any real healing output, even when left completely free. Despite a ton of AoE healing abilities like Prayer of Mending, Prayer of Healing, and Divine Hymn, none of them really do any throughput. So despite having some nice tools and niche abilities, their healing output just sadly isn't up to par. Okay, so now we're going to be moving up another tier and adding spec which has had quite the glow up as of late. Previously in 9.0, Restoration Druid had absolutely no place in the RBG meta, but with new PvP talents like Keeper of the Grove, they've started to find more of a footing. Having an incredibly mobile healer allows you to more easily play the map, not to mention their healing output, crowd control, and survivability is all very strong. One spec which also is on the verge of being strong is Restoration Shaman. Honestly, they've got one of the best kits, Grounding Totem, Sky Fury, and great cooldowns like Healing Tide and Spirit Link. They've even got decent healing output with Chain Heal and the Tidebringer PvP talent. But sadly, what they're held back by is just the strength of the other two healers inside of our S tier, both of which either have stronger cooldowns or more healing output. Speaking of healing output, the first spec in our highest tier is Disciplined Priest, and they're the kings of throughput. Nothing comes remotely close to the healing you're capable of doing thanks to Atonement. Purge the Wicked on the enemy team and Atonement on your allies can essentially blanket heal almost all damage over time effects, and all without casting. And then you've even got the ridiculously strong defensive of Power Word Barrier with the Dome of Light PvP talent to help cover strong cooldown. Discs are so strong that it's rare you'll ever see an RBG team without two of them. Disciplined Priest's only weakness is their lack of single target healing, and this is what our next healer does in abundance. Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin is essentially the utility bot of the healing lineup in RBGs. The power of your blessings, so your freedom, sacrifice, and protection are all must-haves, especially on flag maps. And then having cleansed the weak is the icing on the cake, to help deal with the spread pressure of the oh-so-common balanced druids. Two Disciplined Priests and one Holy Paladin is what's considered meta, and has been for some time. Alright, that's going to be our 9.1 Rated Battleground Healer Melee and Range tier list. If you enjoy Rated Battleground content and would like to see more, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, if you're interested in playing any of the meta specs featured in this tier list, be sure to check out our guide on setting up your character ready for Rated Battlegrounds. For now though, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.